I'm very heartened to see this morning the very impressive gathering at the start of a very timely Green Business Forum. It is for us a positive signal of the commitment to build our nation and the economy through the sharing of knowledge and the exploration of in innovative and cutting-edge ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, the downward spiral of the world economy has dominated much of the news over the past few years. Stagnancy of traditional business practices coupled with slow consumer spending has mandated that countries devise new ways of injecting vibrancy back into their economies. One real opportunity is the creation of and investment in green business prospects. President Obama's stimulus package focused heavily on green growth, targeting some 71 billion United States dollars to sustainable energy and environmental incentives and another 20 billion United States dollars to green tax incentives. Korea recently launched its Green New Deal, which is designed to create close to 1 million green jobs. Turkey, in a bid to boost local employment, has invested in domestic wind turbine factories for local and export use. Perhaps the most ambitious is Mazda City, Masdar City, in oil-rich Abu Dhabi, where they are building the world's first carbon-neutral city, fully powered by renewable energy. Compared with countries such as our neighboring Barbados, where energy costs have dictated the exploration and successful application of solar technology, Trinidad and Tobago, with our almost two billion a year fuel subsidy, has been slow to adapt to changing global patterns in the area of green businesses. But we must now join the rest of the world in managing the challenges associated with a threatened environment in order to successfully initiate and sustain a greener economy in Trinidad and Tobago, we need to understand the areas of critical environmental concern which currently negatively affect our economy. Some of these include inadequate waste management, flooding, poor water quality, and access, forest loss, illegal quarrying, of course, unplanned land use, poor agricultural practices, and the unexpected effects of green change. And these are significant challenges. They are challenges which we intend to meet. In fact, I must tell you that this week appears to be for us a green week. On Monday morning, World Forest Day, we were in San Fernando at the San Fernando Hill. Yesterday, we signed an, uh, an agreement with the Inter-American Development Bank to support the establishment of a climate change task force in the Ministry of the Environment. And this morning, we are here for our Green Business Forum. So you can, you can understand why I ran out of green ties <laughs> on the third day. Ladies and gentlemen, the concept of green business, as you are aware, is multidimensional and can be applied in various ways to almost any form of business. Essentially, greening, greening business practices form a critical part of the application of sustainability. Therefore, any entity making the decision to green should be applying the triple bottom, bottom line approach. And I think uh, Senator Minister Mary King will speak to this later in the proceedings. This approach measures a business's performance not only by economic indicators, but also by measuring its environmental impact and social responsibility. Thus, any business, company, organization, or individual committing to green or sustainable business practices are immediately committing to creating opportunities for new, innovative, and competitive products and services. They are also committing to the development and utilization of pioneering technologies and indeed research opportunities. Green business practices also contribute to building strategic and profitable partnerships, synergies, and relationships throughout supply chains and other linkages. And also, they influence consumption, production, and investment patterns. The very premise of green business mirrors the basis of government's philosophy. 
Therefore, we support any initiative which considers this exciting way forward. We encourage corporate practices that focus on communities and youth education and provide opportunities for developing environmentally and socially aware citizens. And in this, uh, on, in this regard, I want to draw your attention. In May, the San Fernando City Corporation will host San City Green Expo at Skinner Park. I believe it is uh, during the period the 12th to the 15th of May, and we support that initiative as well. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, the People's Partnership, even before we became the government, subscribed firmly to the principle that the development of our citizens was our highest priority. We believe, and we still believe, that real development must not only be manifested in big buildings and resource exploitation, but primarily through investing in our people through education, social programs, which all lead to eradicating poverty in addition to investments in health and technology and in creating safe spaces for our children to develop into well-rounded adults. We envision that investing in our people would foster more innovators and motivators to take our country to new heights and to realize our true potential. Therefore, any commitments we make towards supporting green business must be supported by the appropriate training in our schools and in the tertiary education institutions. Our philosophy for, for development is grounded in a framework for sustainability. Through our interconnected pillars for sustainable development, we are moving away from short-term thinking and towards deeper developmental goals in which our economy society and environment are of equal importance. Our focus on green prospects embodies what we envisioned in our pillars of development captured in our manifesto. Those include people-centered development, poverty eradication and social justice, a more diversified knowledge-intensive economy, and securing our place in the world. Already the ministry, our Ministry of Housing and the Environment, we are seeking to strengthen the legisl legislative capacity of the EMA by bringing quarries less than 150 acres back into the Certificate of Environmental Clearance process. <laughs> the appropriate legal instruments have already been drafted and are now on the way to the Cabinet. And, we'll, and the Chairman of the EMA will keep a hawk-eye view on that, on that matter. We are also pursuing aggressively, not without some problems, but we are pursuing the passage of the beverage container bill, which will confront the issue of beverage containers contributing to flooding and other environmental problems. I told you what we are thinking of doing. What we have done is that we have opened the Green Fund so that more community-based organizations, NGOs, CBOs, and appropriate state institutions can access the Green Fund for environmental conservation. In addition, the ministry is, re is reviewing the draft air pollution and waste management rules, as well as moving to change the legislation governing the entire Green Fund. Effective environmental change in this country rests heavily in the collaborative and cohesive work of the agencies mandated with the responsibility of environmental management. It was therefore my priority to consolidate the various departments and intra-ministerial divisions which have environment, environmental concerns. As such, the Environmental Planning and Policy Division, the Forestry Division, the National Reforestation and Watershed Rehabilitation Program, as well as various boards managed by state-appointed personnel, the Environmental Management Authority, the Housing Development Corporation, the Shagaramas Development Authority, the CPEP, the Land Settlement Agency, the Sugar Industry Labor Welfare Committee, it, it is a big um, ministry here. They all fall under the purview of the Ministry of Housing and the Environment. This move has provided a common platform for ministry divisions and agencies to work together. I was told upon assuming office that we have never had the interaction of the CPEP and the EMA in the history 
of both organizations. And we moved immediately to deal with that by promoting more and more uh, multi-agency projects and collaborations since they, 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 they all have a commonality in terms of promoting our own environmental best practices and elements of our own climate change policy. Only this week, we saw the successful launch of a joint project of the EMA and the Forestry Division aimed at youth awareness in commemoration of International Year of Forests. Currently, we are seeking to integrate the work of the two portfolios of the ministry by looking at elements of green housing into HDC projects through the utilization of solar technology and environmental design components. We are working to develop a Green Gov initiative where this ministry will lead by example in greening our buildings, processes, and ways of doing businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, we could not wait for you. We just could not wait for this activity. We have advertised in the newspapers, you would have seen, an invitation to businesses to tender for the installation of solar street lighting and associated components for the establishment of the 13 police surveillance bays along our highways and byways, so that we have moved on that. And in a related point, upon assuming office as well, I, I made the, the observation to several divisions in the environment that from where I came from, from my perspective, I felt that the issue of the environment was polarized between two points. Uh, on the one hand, many persons in our national community felt that environment was picking up garbage on the beach, as important and critical as, as that is. That they felt that that was it, that that was the nature of this notion of environment. While on the other hand, citizens also felt that on the other side, it was more sophisticated and scientific area, dealing with climate change and more, some of the more technical matters of managing uh, carbon emissions and so on. And we began on a particular approach to mainstream environment so that citizens, ordinary citizens, they can all participate and understand and be aware of some of the challenges and what role they can play. And I made the point Monday at San Fernando Hill, and I said that this appears to be the only area of development where every single citizen can actually do something or refrain from doing something that contributes to sustainable development in this area. And if we mainstream and we get the right mix with awareness, cultural change and so on, all our citizens can participate in this development effort. So ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the examples by which the government, through our ministry, has started its journey towards sustainable development. We have made some strides, but as the professor will always remind us, there's a lot more to be done. I know it is the intent of this forum to bring together the relevant decision makers and stakeholders in creating an environment for green growth, which we fully endorse. The key speakers and panelists will be examining specific issues as we progress. The EMA, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to make special mention of the Environmental Management Act as executed by the Environmental Management Authority. They have the tools, they have the mandate to pursue this initiative, and we will be providing the support to the EMA either directly through the ministry or through our associated agency. The AMA has also a very vibrant education and outreach program, but they need the capability to increase effective training across the nation, as well as the ability to effectively develop the incentives and tools for the green entrepreneurial class. We have already initiated discussions with the Minister of Finance to explore practical economic incentives towards greater support for green initiatives in Trinidad and Tobago. Another avenue requiring significant attention and support and led by the Ministry of Energy is our potential for renewable and alternative energy. We are indeed a resource-rich nation, but we have to be realistic about how long our oil and gas will, will sustain us. Progressive nations such as Norway, Canada, and New Zealand, to name a few, are those which are conserving their fossil energy and focusing on alternative and renewable 
energy possibilities. You will recall that Minister Dukaran in his budget presentation spoke of government's intent to support renewables via several fiscal incentives, including zero rating for solar water heating equipment and tax allowances of up to 25% on household solar water heating equipment with a maximum value of $10,000. Ladies and gentlemen, you are also aware, and I don't want to repeat the, our policy position. In October 2010, we approved the creation of a compressed natural gas task force under the Ministry of Energy in order to facilitate the implementation of the accelerated development of CNG as a significant transportation fuel in Trinidad and Tobago. And these are initiatives that the Minister of Energy would also share with us. These are you know, the, the policy approaches that we are taking, and I wanted in closing just to mention one point in that over the last eight months or so, we have met several businesses and investors, both locally and abroad, and they all come knocking to our door, and you, when they come, we welcome them, they come with their PowerPoint presentation, armed with handouts and so on, and they're all interested in getting involved in the environmental goods and services sector. And then I asked, I said, but why don't you do it? Why, why did you come here in the first place? And they indicated, well, it is not as simple as setting up a, a double stall in that there, there are issues of demand and supply. There are issues of economy of scale and economy of scope. And it requires some uh, facilitation and support by the government as a matter of public policy. And your meeting over the next two days, I will ask you to also focus on the role of the state on presenting to us a policy framework that we can consider and through the appropriate um, procedure, we can adopt to support the sector. It goes without saying that the government must support the green environmental initiative, but also through businesses. There are some type of activity that may not be able to take off by themselves, otherwise they would have taken off a long time ago. And this is one of the objectives, I believe, that we should also set ourselves. Also arising from this uh, meeting this morning and over the next two days, I'm hoping that we can also form at the end of this session something akin to a green business chamber of industry where those organizations, agencies, businesses involved in greening can get together so that they can represent collectively their interests to the government so that when we meet this group of uh, business personnel, innovators, uh, investors, and so on, we can respond directly to your needs, to your concerns, and you can participate in helping us to shape and draft policy that will support your uh, subsector, so to speak. We have it in other areas. We have the energy chamber of commerce and so on. So that we can look at forming and institutionalizing this sector to work with the Ministry of Environment. If we will achieve that as well over the next two days, I'm sure that we can, you know, we can go a long way in igniting this sector. And I want to remind you, because of my own academic and, and practical training, that this is a serious sector for job creation as well. And given some of the challenges we face in our economic uh, uh, development, job creation is not going to come easily through the traditional sectors. We may have to look to this area for creating substantial jobs as well that are sustainable over the long run. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a lot to be done, a lot to be said. I always like the line at these seminars when you say, it will not be a talk shop, but still we have to talk. <laughs> because we can't just uh, give, give each other signs over the next two days. But I'm hoping that we'll have a productive outcome and we will arrive at some conclusions and recommendations that will assist not just the government, but the entire country, assist us with our development. So thank you all so much. And it is, you know, it is my pleasure to be here and to see this group. It is a, an initiative that we discussed very early in our term. And I'm happy that within one year, we are seeing this, uh, this start I can only imagine the exciting possibilities that will flow. Thank you all very, very much.